one year has ended and the next one's about to begin. And the question is, have you done your homeschool record keeping? I know some of you guys hear that and you're like, <gasps> that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Others of you are going, well, what's homeschool record keeping and why would I need to do it? And I know there's still others of you who are sitting there thinking, Katie, you don't understand. My state doesn't require homeschool record keeping, so I don't need to do that. Well, today I'm gonna share with you guys why you should do homeschool record keeping and how to do it in an easy, manageable system that works even if you have a large family. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Life in the Mundane. I am second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos and on this channel we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are going to help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little mom. So why should you keep homeschool records, especially if your state doesn't require it? Well, there's two reasons. One is it's just good to have just in case. The HSLDA, which is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which is an organization that fights for our homeschool freedoms, highly recommends that all homeschoolers, regardless of their state laws, keep homeschool records. This is just a good thing in case anything were to ever come into question and someone were to say, I don't know, are you really homeschooling them? Or whatever the issue may be, just to have those records because it's a lot harder to get them together or sometimes even impossible to get them together after the fact. So just keeping good records is just a good way of life. The second reason why I think it's important to do homeschool record keeping is it's memories. It helps you to see your child's progress, especially if you do have times where you're like, I don't even know if this is working. You can see samples of your children's work. You can see pictures and you can see reports and fun things like that. It almost works like a homeschool yearbook. And I really, really have appreciated it for that reason. So. Before we jump into what to include and what supplies you need to do your homeschool record keeping, I do want to give just a little announcement. And that is that you should know your homeschool laws when it comes to your state and what they require. Some do require having keeping records, like I've mentioned before, and some do not, like the state of Kansas. We don't require to keep any records whatsoever. However, some states will even go even further than that, say not only do you need to keep records, but you need to keep very specific things in your records. So be sure you know your homeschool state laws. If you are unsure of what those are, you can go to hslda.org. They have a map, you can click on your state and they will list out all of the specifics of the homeschool laws in your area. So what supplies do you need in order to create your homeschool records? Well, the first thing you'll need is a binder. I recommend getting a three inch binder. If you have only like one, maybe two kids, you can maybe get away with something smaller. But if you have many kids at all, I recommend going with the three inch. You also are gonna need dividers. I like to get these at the end of the back to school season when you can get them for like 10 cents a piece and I stock up big time for our whole year. So you'll need some dividers. This is not a necessity, but it does make my life a lot easier, and that is getting sleeve protectors. I actually don't buy these in back to school season. I buy them on Amazon in bulk, and I have found that to be cheaper, but I've also found that they're a little bit higher quality, so they can handle being stuffed with a lot more papers in it, which will be important here in just a second. So another thing that you'll want is a hole punch so that you can actually put papers into your binder, and then some optional things that you may want is access to a printer or a photocopy machine and potentially a thumb drive to keep some of your digital records on, which we'll talk more here about in just a second. So after we've gathered supplies, the next step is to do our prep work before we're actually ready to compile these. Now, I'm gonna share with you this prep work, and if this is your first time ever putting together homeschool records, this part might take a little bit, but as you get the hang of it, you'll actually be able to include this prep work all throughout your school year to make compiling the records at the end of the year a lot easier. Some of the prep work that you can do in advance is to go through and write down or gather to Together, all of the homeschool curriculum you used for this past year. One of the ways you can do that when it comes to prepping ahead of time is by creating a Google Docs or a document for yourself and starting to write out all the things you use, the read alouds you use, what do you use for science, history, Bible, what do you use for individual kids, what extracurriculars did they do, all of those things. Keeping a running list of this can be really helpful because a lot of times as homeschool moms, we throw a lot of supplemental things in there that we didn't necessarily plan at the beginning of the year that just get added. So I'll just go in and occasionally, probably like once a month or so, go in and just add in those extras that we've added throughout that were not unexpected. The second thing is you'll want to go through your photos. You can do this by going through your storage sharing app if you have like Google Photos or the iCloud, things like that, or by going through Facebook and Instagram. Go through those and start, start pulling or tagging pictures or videos that have to do with your homeschool year. 
create a digital folder that can store those and or put them on a thumb drive like I mentioned before. You can then have records but also those memories of that fun science project you did or getting to go on that fun field trip. I don't print out all of these pictures as they're not all ones I necessarily want to constantly be looking back at but having them all in one place allows for me to kind of walk down memory lane whenever I want to and makes good records because they're time stamped and visual proof that you actually did that schoolwork. So now that we have our supplies gathered, we've talked about our prep work and how we can make it a little bit easier for next time, we are then going to get into our assembling. Now I will be upfront with you guys and let you know that this is not the only way to keep homeschool records. There are actually lots of different ways to do it, but this is the way that we have found after several years of homeschooling that works best for us. So first you're going to grab your dividers and you're going to want to label them. Here are some of my suggested labels, but again, feel free to do whatever is right for you and your family. So I label the first one as group subjects. This is anything that everybody in your family does all together. The next one I label is for special projects. These are things like one year we decided to, uh, with the election, we decided to run a mock election of our own and we had our kids drop campaign posters and do all these fun things. So we included that in there. This year, my kids created a newspaper or space for their space unit. And so they had, they each wrote an article for the newspaper and having to do with whatever we were talking about in that topic. And so I wanna include that in my special projects tab. We also like to have a tab for field trips where we can put different brochures and pictures and things that we have seen on those field trips. Or if you have your child fill out a form kind of um, recapping the field trip, you could put those in there. We have a tab for reading logs. This is where I keep track of the, what we read aloud, but also the kids' individual reading logs. So what they read on their own throughout the school year. Right now, it only has on there the things that I assigned them to read, but this year I really wanna grow that to what they chose to read as well as what I assigned them to read for school. After that, you're going to have one tab per child. And so you are gonna label things for each of your children, however many children you need, depends on how many tabs you need. And then in the back, you can always have tabs for just pictures if you do wanna print them out and do kind of a scrapbook style or just in others category if there's other things you need to save but you don't feel like fits in any of these other ones. Step number two is we are gonna photocopy the index or table of contents in all of our textbooks for the ones that we actually have textbooks for. So for instance, we have Apology to Science, so I'll go through and I'll photocopy all of that. We've done this when we've had math textbooks or when we've had, uh, we did a manners curriculum one year, things like that. We will photocopy all of those table of contents and then I will go through and I will highlight every single chapter that we did. If you wanna make this a little bit easier on yourself, you could photocopy these at the beginning of the year, keep them in a place, and you can even write in the date that you completed them, and that also serves as a great record. I don't put the dates in, but I do highlight all the chapters we've gotten to, and that means, Mama, even if you started a curriculum at the beginning of the year and ditched it halfway through, go ahead and photocopy the index or table of contents of that curriculum and highlight the chapters that you did actually complete. You can a lot of times find these online as well if you have for some reason gotten rid of a curriculum or already thrown away your copies. Um, those are important things to remember that having that can be really, really helpful just to show kind of the scope and sequence of what you've covered and it keeps you from having to write out a bunch of information. I do this oftentimes and by putting it in the group subject one, again, so our science, our Bible, our history, we did sign language last year as a family, things like that. I'll put all of that in that group section at the front. In those individual kids sections, what I will put in there is a sampling of their work. And the way this works is that we wanna take from as many subjects as possible, wanna take a sample from the beginning, the middle, and the end. Now, this is going to be probably a little hard for some of you if this is your first time putting together homeschool records, but I promise it is freeing once you do it. You're gonna grab that workbook that your kid took all year long to finish. You're gonna grab out chapter one, and then you're gonna grab out chapter 15, and then you're gonna drop, grab out chapter 30 at the end. And you're gonna save those. And then you're gonna pitch the rest of the workbook. This is gonna allow you to reduce the amount of clutter you have in your home and to pull out samples that are relevant and that'll be helpful in showing that progression. Now, I don't always do the first, the middle, and the exact end. I usually will find ones that show the best amount of work. So sometimes the first few chapters are just total review. And so I'll pick the first chapter of where they're learning a new concept, or maybe there's something kind of like three fourths of the way through that was a really great article or report that they wrote. So I'll pull that out. But just pulling a sampling of work showing progression for each subject is how I like to do it. 
We like to put these in the sleeve protectors instead of punching holes in them because I can actually put multiple things in one. So all of his science stuff is in here in this one. And so it's notes that he took for his science lessons. There's some copy work pages for that. It gets a little bulky sometimes, but overall it helps keep it all together. And then I can pull it out and look through it if I want. Other things you might want to include in that personal section behind each of their names is charts. Things like Extra Math gives you um, kind of a progress chart of how they're doing. So I go and print one at the beginning, at the middle, and at the end of the school year, or printing awards that your child have gotten, maybe off online programs, or again, like programs like All About Reading. I showed his trigger chart, and I have his award of you've completed this program. We do geography in our school, and so with that, he had, I took a sampling of different ones that he had done where he had colored in the picture, and then on the back, he's written notes about what we learned about the state. I have samplings of his spelling list from the beginning, middle, and end of the school year as well. I don't worry so much about what order these go in per se. I just make sure there's a sampling of everything. If you do things like teaching textbooks, you can actually just print off their grades for the year and it will have their grade and the date they completed it and everything. That's all I do for there. I don't print off individual lessons for that. If you have kids who have done fun projects or maybe artwork that's too big to display within your portfolio, I highly recommend taking pictures of that or videos to document it. Again, you can print out some of those and put them in your binder, but you can also take those and put it on that thumb drive or put it in a Google Cloud fridge so that you have that for later. All in all, it really doesn't have to be complicated. It can be very, very simple. Make sure you know your homeschool laws. You can print those off and check them off to make sure you have everything included that you need. But in reality, we're just looking for samplings beginning, middle, end of the year to help your child show progress. I really like the fact that this system allows me to store all six of my kids' records in one spot instead of having six separate notebooks, so it's a very doable process. I've also put a top shelf in my school shelves, if you see my drawers. I have a top shelf where my kids, when I go throughout the, when they go throughout the year and they maybe finish a workbook or they have something that I'm like, ooh, I want to save this for records, I'll pull it out then and I'll stick it in that shelf so when it comes time for me to do my record keeping and put it in the binder, I can just grab that whole shelf, sort it, and put it in the binder as is. If you guys want to see a look inside one of my binders specifically and kind of a walkthrough flip through of that, I will link an old video that I have done up in the iCards and down in the description below. And be sure to stick around for Saturday's video where I'm going to be sharing with you guys all about how we use MP3 players in our school and what you can put on them in order to help you make the most of that resource. Talk to you later. Bye.